Go. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna, and today I'm in Holden, Mass, shopping at Whimsical Woolens. I'm here with Cheryl, the owner. Hello, how are you? <laughs> and my friend Patrice, who's taking the video. And we're just going to take a quick walk through the store to see the kinds of things that Cheryl has and sells, because she can also ship to you if you are looking for supplies. So let's take a quick, what you can tell what time of the year it is and what year it is because of this, but it is what it is, mm -hmm. and we can still shop. We can still carefully shop. So we're gonna come in this way. Cheryl, is this one that you did? It is one that I did. This is yeah. amazing. That was a great one to do because of all the different colors I like to use. Wow. Yeah, that is a lot of detail. I just, just loved it. Beautiful, and do you offer this pattern for sale? That is a fabric by Fabric Foot. Okay. And I think, I'm not sure where she's from, but that's her one of her patterns. And this you can find gorgeous. her online. And beautiful primitive stuff yeah. too, like yeah. this one. I love the primitive stuff. I love the primitive stuff. And I love to hook with number seven and eight cuts. The Interesting. The okay, best. great. Because yeah. a lot of people ask about the different cuts. I usually do five, five, six. Five, Cheryl's six, does seven, seven and seven, eight, eight. A little more of the mm -hmm. uh, primitive. Yep. I'm going to have to check over here. Yep. It looks like I've a bunch of patterns. patterns over here. And this is all wool up for grabs if anybody wants to take that, which I, I certainly do. Will. Will you take some? That one right there. I've got yep. to have and that. And a lot of pre-cut wool. Oh, my word. Okay. Let's check out in here some beautiful braided rugs, too. So you've got tons of wool, and you've got something that's really popular lately, the hooking with yarn. Hooking with yarn and also um, binding with the yarn. Oh, that's right, doing yeah. the whip stitch around whip the edges stitch, yeah. with the yarn. This is the perfect weight yeah. for that. So what kind of prices is yarn usually? Uh, th that yarn is usually $11 a skein. Yep. The ones in that basket, uh, $5 each. Wow. So those are ones that people have used and given back. And they've got a little extra. Like a little extra, right. See, that's great for building up your stock, right? If you get bits and pieces of colors, because if you're not binding and you don't need that much, you're right. just hooking, right. you, you might know, not... lots of little colors exactly. is good. Exactly. And over here, I have most of my hand dyed wool. And wow. a little bit in there, and then these are the bigger pieces. Um, some frames for sale. Those are gorgeous. So you have like the traditional like tool bindings here mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff that you've dyed. Yep. What's great about some of these is you've, you've over dyed a lot of them, like the yes. plaids and the I love the tents. texture of that. I love the texture of plaids. I, I do too. Think it's, and to mix them with hand dyed is great. I love it. It's a great combo. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, like I've said, I say this all the time and not everybody's into plaids. But you, you can't make a plaid, right? Only like a male can make a plaid. So when you right. find a plaid that you love, you have to get it yes. because you can dye in your kitchen at home, but you can't do these kinds of over dyed plaids at home unless you have this exact same plaid. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful to find stuff like this because it's a very rare and hard find. It's going to be a unique thing. Yeah, like some of this, like just right here, like some of these have over dyed and that's what they come out to be. It's just perfect. That is so neat. Perfect. And these are just mill dyed um, and a lot of different primitive colors. Gorgeous. Oh Those are classic. Which I tend to love. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you do primitive and you love that traditional primitive look, you go for the rusts and the mm -hmm. browns and greens and reds and even down here. These are beautiful grays. Great yep. stock. And then punch needle is over on Yeah, side. let's look at that. And you've got a big pattern of patterns yeah. here. Yeah. So some of these are online or available. These um, are, yeah, these are my patterns and I've got, so most of them are mine. I think they're all my oh, size. These are, oh my gosh. That you do yourself. I do myself, yeah. This is one of my favorite ones. I this love that is one. gorgeous. Look at that. Right? And with the holidays coming, everybody needs a bit of this, right? <laughs> you got to start thinking forward because by the time you get settled in with your project, look at the Thanksgiving hats in there. But yeah. These, oh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving patterns too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, when, if, when you do the primitive, and especially for beginners, it's great to start with the primitive with a wider cut, like a seven or an eight, like Cheryl's saying, mm -hmm. and choose a pattern like this. These patterns are perfect for a beginner. Um, you know, it, it'll get you the speed going, it'll get you the confidence going. It's a good way to start. Likewise, if you are someone who's starting with punch needle, this is a great punch needle mm -hmm. display up here. This is punch. I don't have my glasses on. Mm -hmm. I do yes, have my glasses. Punch. No, I don't. And I have all the patterns. Some are mine. Some are different designers from oh Etsy gosh. that I like to buy from. Oh, and some of the Etsy ones are great, yeah. too. I'm sure yours are equally great, at least. And I have a lot of the oh Baldani threads, which, you know, I love using those because you don't need to keep cutting your thread, re-threading it, you just keep You going. just go it's from the little yeah. spool. Yeah. So that question came up this week, whether you're hooking with yarn or you're punching with yarn, the question came up this week, do you cut it first? For me, I don't cut it first, unless it's turning into a tangle and a nightmare. Mm -hmm. If it's practical to cut it, cut it. If it's not and you're using these kinds of spools, mm -hmm. it makes sense to not cut it, as right. long as you can control it and you're, it's, it's not bothering you. There's no reason to cut it. 
And then you've got some of these little boards up here with some, are these some of your designs? Those are my designs, yes. Those are great. This is a nice simple one to start with too, this little star down here. That is great. So punch needle is so much fun for those of you who are trying with, hooking with yarn or are traditional hookers. Just a refresher, when you're doing your punch needle, you're doing the design in reverse and you're doing it backwards to forwards. And you're using, Cheryl, when you use that particular um, yarn thread, what size needle are you using? For punch needle? Yeah. I use a three strand. Okay. And the one I like the best is a CTR needle. CTR needle, CTR I don't needles. even know that. That's great. Yeah, I can show you what one looks like. To me, they have great control. That's and good. You yeah. can also switch the depths of them if you want to. So you can have like lower, um, punch needle, and then you can do a little bit higher if you like. So some so of it higher, some sometimes higher. So you get some good dimension. Yeah, yeah. That's good because you can have like a, a, di a different sort of heights with right. one piece. Right. So or, if you've got a pumpkin and you want the pumpkin to stand out more, you can make it higher, or you know whatever you want to do. But it kind so of gives you some control. So j I just want to make the point that if you are doing punch needle, you don't necessarily have to do the Amy Oxford needle. There are other needles. There are, there are other threads. There are other thicknesses. Exactly. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of yeah. choices. Not to be bewildering and open up a crazy world, but there are lots of choices. And I think it's a personal thing, too. Some people just love the CTR, and yeah. some people love the Ultra Punch. It's, it's just a personal choice. Yeah. Like and do you sell the needles, too? I do. Great. I, do. I have the threaders, the needles, all of the cloth, and yeah, everything so you need. So if you're getting into something like that, it would be great to get in touch with Cheryl and, and pick a needle, because she'll be able to help you choose like what kind of thread or yarn, yarn, mm -hmm. still yarn. You're going to be putting through the needle and, and a design. I'm just going to come back to these designs because there's a lot of. And this is in Holden Mass. Yeah, this is Holden Mass. Thank you. Yeah, there's lots of original designs. Really nice. Again, lots of cutouts. Super good work. I love this kind of thing with the blue and the white pumpkin. There cannot be enough said about white pumpkins. I know, I love white pumpkins. I do too. It's just so different. It's so different, and they're so New England, I think. Very New England. This one too. The sheep. I mean, these are all great. Look at this. I mean, really, that is so, so good. So lots of choices with the punch needle. And as you can see, when people finish punch needle, often very small scale, you can mount it in different ways. Is this like a little candle box or a yeah. match box? Yeah, yeah, so cute. This is like classic primitive stuff. Right? I love to put them on horn books and Aww. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, punch, punch is great. That's the next thing we got to start promoting on the page because people are looking for different things to try. It's nice to switch off and do different things. It's nice to try different things. And for people who com not complain in a negative way, but complain of problems with their wrists and mm -hmm. their hands from pulling up on a hook, especially if you use monk's cloth and, you know, a wider cut and it's just a lot of pressure every time you pull, it's sometimes a good idea to switch to punch because instead of pulling up, you're going to be pushing down. That's a and great you just point. Give your body, uh, you know, give your joints a rest. I'm 40E and I'm already having issues with hands and wrists. So sometimes it's nice to just do the opposite thing. This just caught my eye, these beautiful hooks. The uh, polymer yeah, these clay. Are, yes, this comes from a person up in Canada and she wow. hand makes these. Those are my beginner hooks. And that then if you wanted to so try good. like a really wide cut, these are the ones made by Richie from England. Holy moly. Yeah. These are yep, so they're all handmade. They're all beautiful. Look at that. And how much is this kind of thing? Those are 15. That's great. Yeah, these are a little more. The ones from England are usually about 40, 42. That looks like a cross pattern. It's not or gorgeous. I, mean, I know. I love it. And then you've got the traditional wooden hooks that these mm -hmm. are the sort of pencil style. Yeah, and these are more for like if you're going to do like an eight, yeah. number nine cut. See how wide the, the tip is. Yeah. So when people say, you know, what kind of hook should I get for starting, it's always going to depend on what you're hooking and what your backing cloth is, right? Because some backing cloths are tighter than others, and then it's going to really depend on whether you're doing wool or strips and what width of strips. So it's good to talk to somebody like Cheryl, who can say, with what you're doing, this is your hook, right? This is a primitive hook that's going to get you there. So if you're really, truly a beginner and you need help with just getting your materials together, you don't want to make a mistake by spending a lot of money on the mater on wrong materials, it's good to speak to somebody at a store, because that's the only way you can be sure. If you just go on a buying spree on Etsy or whatever, you're going to overspend and you're going to end up with a lot of the wrong supplies. Um, looking at these frames over here, these are great lot frames, right? Right, and those those are handmade from a wonderful gentleman out in New York, and his name is Andrew Mistock, I believe, and he has Mistock Farms. Hand makes them to order. 
Gorgeous. So I sell punch needle frames and rug working frames. Yeah, so. These are great. So you've got them covered up. These have these gripper teeth under them that are going to hold your vacuum material. And obviously they're coming in different sizes, but the small ones are really good for beginners. Like, yeah, especially the one right on the right. Not to interrupt you, the one on the right. No, no. Oh, yeah, this one, that one, yeah, that's, that's a great size. size. Mm -hmm. That's a great size. Yeah, and you know when you're traveling to hook-ins and you're just doing small pieces anyway, it's great to own something like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And mm, I just got one. You just got Perfect. one. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, a smaller size. Not everybody likes to have something giant that they're working on. You know, it's good to be able to get up and go. Oh, these masks, huh? I know you get so hot. <laughs> you know, it's like a, I feel like Darth Vader. Like, oh, yeah. Mm. This is a gorgeous room for working. So. In other times, you'd be having groups in here. I have larger groups, yes. So now yeah. we just do two or three people at a time who would drop in. I do individual appointments and then also individual classes. Oh, nice. So that works out, but it's just the large groups that we're kind of missing right now, which is, that's okay. It'll, It'll all come out. out. So Holden Mass is, uh, is near like Worcester Mass. So for a lot of us in southern New England, this is a great location. If you are in northern Connecticut or in Mass, this is going to be your store. So this is a great this is a great place to get acquainted with because anything you're going to need is going to be here. And maybe we can look at some more of the stuff on the. This is adorable. And do you recommend making an appointment with Cheryl? It's not a bad idea. Yeah, so making I, an appointment. You know, just to be yeah. sure you're here. Yeah, I do drop-ins with people every Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. But for an individual appointment, yeah, just give me a call. Yeah, not a problem because I don't live too far from here. So. As you can see from Cheryl's personality, she's not scary and stressful at no, all. No, not you don't scary. Put pressure no, on no, people. not at all. <laughs> Good person to get going with and to figure out your supplies with. And I also think too, I was talking to Patrice earlier. Everybody cooks in a different fashion, and there's no a right way or wrong way to get that going. Yeah, I think as long as you're enjoying it and you're having fun with it, I think it's great. You know, I think that's a great sentiment because there's so much talk about should I cut my ends as I go? Should I do it this way? Am I supposed to use this number of strippers? Mm -hmm. And to me, these are all curled down, old time, crazy obsessive details. I, you know, that, that yeah, like one day at a time. And I do love curl down, and I do love I, I respect it, I really do. But there um, are so many ways oh, to skin so a cat. Many. You know, it, it's so there many. There really aren't a lot of wrong ways with hooking, especially when you look at the Canadian hookers now, mm -hmm. the Dion Patrick type things with the different heights and the mixed materials. That's right. We were just talking about that. Yeah, it does. I think have Patrice to look has some of that with her rugs. I really uh, do. Let's look at Patrice's yeah. rug. You've yeah. been working on amazing yes. rugs. This enormous rug. Yes. This is your own design. I think this is five by seven, but it looks smaller. Let me think. It looks smaller. It's definitely not five by I seven. I think it's like a four by three, maybe. Yeah, or this, two and a half. this is this is three at most, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Like a four and a half by three, maybe. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, because when you first told me the size of this, I thought you were like making a rug for the breakers in Newport. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said like ten by eight or something. I, I, th was like, I thought it was five by seven. <laughs> yeah, this is actually beautiful. What did you end up doing with your background? Um, this background is oh, this. Wow. I know, isn't that cool? Oh, see, that's it's so what that cool. background is. It's great to see how something that has, yeah. a, you know, something that's that's multi comes out. Yeah, I unexpected, right? I I could do the whole thing in that, or I could just do these these two pieces and then the upper part i was thinking like a pink to bring out oh, the okay. grace like yeah then it turns into kind of an ombre yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay. and so I like this because it picks up some of the colors you see the little oh i like stripes yeah. in there mm -hmm. it picks up the other colors. Like darker colors yeah You've that's done a lot the background yeah. yeah this is a gorgeous rug and my hooking is totally different than Diana's hooking. It doesn't matter there's it no there's no right or wrong that's hooking. what i'm saying there's no that you have to enjoy mm. it and it's yeah. very I, I, I have to have you stop saying that because it makes me so angry. Don't be angry. Perfect, and it's great the way that it is. Patrice yeah. and I have been friends since kindergarten. Yeah. Crazy, right? We went right up through. Kindergarten. We had Miss Carlotto. <laughs> <laughs> right into high school when you fell down the stairs in the senior hall. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That was one of the best yeah, things I think everybody's life. a different, different style. And I can tell with all my students who's run to who's. That's but really just by neat. the way they hook. That's really neat. I really can't. Yep. It, one of the things I love about Patrice's rug, because there's often talk in books and magazine articles about font, and it's such an accomplishment <laughs> if you have a font that distinguishes you. Like Bev Conway has a font that's like really puffy, and you know her work anywhere. 
Patrice definitely has. Yeah. I recognize this from the covers of your notebooks, like in junior high. <laughs> and this is in your font. Well, your I'm, a, I'm a graphic designer looking for a job, so. <laughs> Um, so yes, that is my font. I created that. It looks great. It's, it's so good to have your own style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can always adapt patterns, right? If you have a pattern that has a font or has something that you don't quite like, it has a sun you want a moon, it has a dog you want a cat, just change it. You know, keep the pattern, but change, make little changes like that to make it your own because then your piece is truly unique. Mm -hmm. Did you get a picture of this llama? Mm -hmm. People love llamas. Isn't that great? I love these um, little hanging things. What too. does the Those llama so say? Yeah. What does the llama say? Like, like that. <laughs> does he? <laughs> I said, that's right. This is Cheryl, the store is so cute. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that you were able to come up. I love it. I love pr primitive. Obviously, I love primitive. Most rugbyers do, but I really love primitive. And I really love how. You know, you say like, "Oh, this is my primitive quarter with all the primitive colors," but you put so many more colors into mm -hmm. it too. It's so alive. This is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Would you say this is your shop, your studio, or your well, store? I call it my studio, but I do have all the supplies that you would need, so it's yes. kind of a shop. Okay. But I like to call it a studio because everybody comes into work and share their ideas. And it is by appointment. Yeah. This is amazing. That is not this, funny. Is this one of your designs? That is supposed to be a quilt. And I got the idea from Quilt. It looks like an applique design. I know. And I kind of switched all the things, all, everything around in it. But I absolutely love Did it. you draw it? No. I, okay. Well, no, I did not draw it. But I switched. How did I do? I took out a lot of the, There was a lot of extra things in it that I took out. I just wanted to have the dogs doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And the cat, like the cat at the bottom playing with the yarn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the dog with the bow. And the dog up in the left. So, doing his thing. <laughs> doing his thing. Yep, that is like that is an uh, international pose of a dog doing his you thing. You got it. Yep, yep. Just like, and you know, this is a good example of what you were just talking about, Patrice, when you do a different color, like in part of it. Mm -hmm. It really creates interest. Mm. There's like a much darker yeah, color. Yeah, it looks part. like a sky. Yep. Yeah, and originally it, it was supposed to be all bright colors in all different sections, and I thought that's not going to work. It's too busy. Yeah. So, that's good that you show that control. I, I rarely show that control because when I have bright colors in my mind, I just go with it, and then I get something that doesn't have enough contrast or isn't quite right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's tricky. It did take me a while to do that one because of that reason. Yeah. Like, Where am I gonna put what? You know. Well, there are so many colors in there, and it is. I love how just that one bit of sky is showing, and how that one. I think it's a dog is like making the leap from the night into the mm -hmm. pink color. Yes, and each dog has a blue collar on. Oh, <laughs> that is really the one unifying thing. Yeah, in one it. unifying thing. Yeah. And of course, then that brings your eye back to all those places, which is a great thing too. Look at the dog in the boat. I know. That is in the boat. hydrant. Yeah, tray. he's got a fish in his mouth. Looks like there's some squirrels in the tree. There's squirrels in the tree and an owl. Oh, and and well, no, that's a cat. Sorry, that's not an owl. <laughs> the cat's like, I beg your yeah, pardon. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and here you've got some roving. I've got right? some roving. Um, yeah, and I also have, I don't think, uh, sheep locks too. Okay, like the Wesley Dale type curls and the sheep curls. Yeah, like, just see, sure these are being made stuff. out of those. Those are really neat. Yeah, yeah. Just if you want to put a tail on something. Exactly, do a little know. bit of an applique thing. Yeah, so that's like what the they, bunny has a little tail up there. Yeah, that's a great idea. Those are real easy to hook. Right in or hook with them. Yep. Really nice. And lots of vignettes here too, old spools and bobbins and things. It's just a really inspiring place to get going. Yeah, it's very established. It is. It is. It's really good. I can't wait to go shopping, so we're gonna have to end this video soon. <laughs> Feeling it. Feeling it. This is gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, so this is yeah. Did Cheryl, did you do this? I did. That that took me about two years off and on. Mm -hmm. I had to put it in time out for a little bit because the sky was kind of driving me a little crazy. I have about eight different colors of pinks and peaches in the sky, and then I had to throw a little bit of gray green in there. Wow. It did take a while, though. That is honestly one of the best skies I've ever seen. Yeah. Did you get a good close-up of that? I mean, there are so many colors in that sky. And what I love about your sky is you haven't tried to do the thing where you go from one color to the next, or it's like sunset and you're going like purple mm -hmm. to... You, it's it's just uniform, but you still have so many colors in it. It really. I remember really shopping works. for those colors, and it took me about six months to find all the ones I really wanted to use. Yeah, when you have a vision, you know. Yeah, that's right. When you think about what you really want to do, you yeah. have to stick to your vision before you really forget yeah. what that looks like. 
But you know, you're, when I'm looking at your stuff, you're sort of directional hooking because that comes up a lot too. Mm -hmm. like beginners will say, how do, I, how do I approach this? Do I go around the tree? Mm -hmm. Do I go back and forth? You can see that Cheryl's going around the tree and around the weather vane and up around the tree. And then on these trees that have more of a safer shape, she's going up, up, up. But then there is that unifying horizontal at the top. Yep. And each person will, will handle this differently. So it's interesting to look at other people's work and see what they do and see if you like what they do. This part here between the church and the house that is like a square, right? You just stuck with the square. Yeah, and the roof too. Like I hardly ever hook in straight lines. I like to, like you said, go around everything. Yeah. But I felt with the roofs, mm. you needed to have those straight yeah, lines. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Perfect. And on yeah. these two, you've gone sort of uh, vertical, but on the covered bridge, you've gone horizontal. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, all great choices. There's a little bit of outlining in this. That's another thing that comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. Should I outline? Mm -hmm. What does it look like when I outline? This is what it looks like when you outline. It looks great, especially with primitive style rugs. It looks great. Yeah, another personal choice, I think, what you feel the piece needs. and yeah. it, it has to all be, I mean, it has that Grandma Moses feel, but it's so colorful. I love it. Oh, thank you. That's a great piece. Well, that was fun. That was a good project. It's so nice to work on long projects like this because you is. think of all the things you were thinking and doing I during did. those times, oh, so, books you were so, reading so or listening so to, true. and it really brings you back. And hopefully they're good times that you're going back to. And I made myself get up every morning early, and I said I'm going to do an hour each day in the morning for this. Had it on my big frame, and I would just sit there for an hour every day and do it because I thought if I don't do this, I'm not yeah. going to finish it. Exactly. So I kind of got myself disciplined with that one. Oh gosh, that is so. Neat. You remind me what some famous writer, who is it? It's Mary something, really famous um, American crime writer, used to say, I'll think of it later, I'll put it in the comments. She used to wake up at like 4.30 every morning mm -hmm. and write for an hour and a half before it was time, she was a single mom, before it was time to put the kids on the bus to go to school and start the day. Cause she said if she didn't have the discipline to do it at that time, it wouldn't get done. It wouldn't. Yeah. It, she, it, her stuff would fall by the wayside and everybody else's stuff would take precedence. Like, like mm -hmm what happens, especially with women. But um, it's interesting, and it, it's a good, I think, policy for yourself to have. I agree. Yeah, that time. I think I started with little kids, because as you know, like you have your time in the morning or you have it late at night. So I chose to have it early in the morning, That's right. usually. Yeah. Wherever you work best, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I absolutely love this shop. I, I love everything about it. it. so much. It's just so nice to meet you. It really is. You too. Yeah, Therese, thank you. Yeah, You're Therese, welcome. thank you so much. Did you want to add anything else? I think you covered almost everything there is. But I would love to meet anybody that wants to come. Yeah. Um, give me a call. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you my card. Yeah, yeah we'll so put the information at the okay. end of the video. We'll put the information on there and we'll keep you up to date Beautiful. as to when uh, things are opening up a little bit more. Okay. When Perfect. the time will come when people can come and get together again to you know Beautiful. work together. Yep. We'll but, keep okay. you up to date on all mm -hmm. of that. Okay. That's, that's a moving target right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, it really is, so that's I appreciate that. Okay. Well for now. Bye-bye from Whimsical Woolens, and yep. we, will, we will see you soon. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. And this is the, the last plaque here. <laughs> it's called Whimsical Woolens, and it's in Holden, Massachusetts. It's 1010 Main Street, Holden, Massachusetts.